What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. You know, um, today is uh, June 20th, 2023, um, and I just wanted to make a helpful, another helpful video about, uh, or podcast about what the Bible says about money. Um, and hopefully this will be helpful uh, to anyone out there and thinking about uh, what does the Bible say about money and our jobs. Before I get started, hey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, subscribe to this channel where you'll get more helpful resources out there. Uh, on, And you can also go to my website. Um, there I can, you can also donate to the ministry. Um, you can donate, help me make videos. Um, uh, I do have someone that I use to edit videos and I also edit videos myself, but, um, when I can, I can use that editor to make videos as well. And so, um, if you feel like you want to help out this channel, um, you can go to my page, uh, website and donate and you'll see a link to my website. If you go to my channel page on YouTube. So, um, what does the Bible say about money? You know, um, I just finished a book that I recommend. Um, and really this book is called Everything the Bible Has to Say About Money. And, um, you know, this book is by Lynn Johnson. And um, basically in this book, he kind of goes through and gives pretty much every Bible verse that the Bible says about money, you know, uh, any Bible verse that has to do with money. And so I wanted to kind of hone down on some of what this book has to say and some of what most pastors will have to say. So one of the first things I think that um, if you are looking to um, have more of a secure uh, life and lifestyle in regards to money, maybe if you're short on money, um, I think a universal thing that one of the things that the Bible brings out and that pastors would bring out is giving. And I want to touch on specifically giving to the church and tithing and giving to uh, poor people. And so um, Proverbs says that he who gives to the poor will not lack. And so um, I would take that verse seriously if I were you. And I would, you know, make it your aim to do something for the poor. And I guess God sees that as, hey, if you are continuously giving to the poor, God will give to you. And it's kind of an exchange that happens. And so I think that verse, you know, applies to us today. We're going to talk about what Jesus had to say. But let's go to tithing. You know, tithing is a debated topic in scripture. But, you know, I was convinced on tithing um, from a sermon that I heard by Pastor Alan Nolan. And he was uh, really talking about how the moral law still applies today when he says, like, don't murder or don't steal and different laws like that. But the ceremonial and the sacrificial laws are done away with. And Jesus fulfilled those on the cross. And then he kind of put a twist on tithing. And he said how it falls under the moral law. Which I don't necessarily have the um, ability to get into on this podcast. But... I think you should highly recommend, I highly recommend 
doing research on tithing um, some verses that you can find tithing on is in the book of Malachi and I was convinced of this because in the book of Malachi God says that he will rebuke the devourer and um, he if you tithe he will pour out such a blessing that you will not have room to contain it and so I think that you know if you can't start with 10% I think something is better than nothing I think you should make it your goal to tithe according to you know what God what you think God is really asking of you but you know I think that um, that verse in Malachi is um, something that applies today um, you know I can go to the verse and really read it for you so in Malachi 3 um, verse 10 to 11 it says bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. So, to me, what that is saying is, you know, God is going to rebuke the things that are um kind of you know you're you're getting money but you feel like you never have enough and that to me is what a devourer is is you know something that is devouring your money is eating it up and to me it's kind of like pouring um pouring a uh you know liquid into a cup but the cup has holes in it so you know, it may fill up for a little bit, but, you know, over time, you know, over a short period of time, you know, the money dwindles. Now, I will say money is one of those things that just, you know, as you know, it comes and goes, you know, and so um, it's not something that you can just um, really put your faith in right and that's what God doesn't want us to do is say you know oh I'm gonna live for money and I'm gonna make my life about getting more and more so um as a summary of the first section of this podcast is you know think about your giving to the poor and also giving to the church and realizing that Jesus started the church 2,000 years ago, and it was Jesus who was receiving help from some of the disciples that he had. And so that is just how the church started, and that same concept continues today. So when you think about it, we're really giving to Jesus, but we're giving to a church that he established so his church can function you know where they paying the the church bills and you know providing communion or um, making sure they have musicians or audio equipment or cameras or microphones and you know all the different things that goes on in you know a church functioning and making sure that the pastor can make have a living in order to, you know, give so he can give his time to studying the word of God. You know, you don't want a pastor who, you know, is not really studying the word of God regularly. And so um, that's something to think about. I would definitely do your research before you reject specifically tithing. I don't think anyone should reject 
giving, you know, just a free will, you know, kind of giving, you know, in general. But, um, you know, tithing specifically 10 percent of your income to your local church, not necessarily like an online ministry or something, but to your church organization, um, you know, I would recommend doing that. And I don't know if this podcast can necessarily convince you of this because I'm going to be covering different topics on money, but um, I wanted to touch on tithing. And so I think you should do your research on tithing, maybe get a book on tithing. Um, And then you can also listen to some other people of why they believe that tithing may not be for the New Testament church. But also, I highly recommend listening to uh, what others have to say about um, why tithing should be practiced today. And I think also adding it to your prayer life, asking God. I think sometimes we forget to ask God for some answers, you know, and we think, you know, about other things, but we don't ever think about asking God or something like that. So that's what I would recommend. And so I'm going to go through some of the content of everything the Bible has to say about money book uh, by uh, last name Johnson uh, and first name Lynn. And so uh, one of the things in the first chapter he talked about is that money is not yours, you know, so everything comes from God. And so you shouldn't have this mentality like, you know, oh, this money is solely mine, you know, and even going on to thinking, you know, oh, my life is my own. And, you know, um, you know, I, I live for myself. And so I think uh, one of the things that he brought out in the book through just different scriptures that he pointed out, and then he also wrote a short paragraph uh, stating his, uh, you know, opinion in that, you know, the money that we get and the things that money can buy and our life and everything is from God. And so that perspective can change how we view life, how we view our resources, and that God is giving you something in order for you to do his will with it yeah you know his will is for us to buy food and clothing and you know the basic necessities but um you know ultimately you have to think from the perspective of the money is not yours it's god's and so that should be something that we can build off of as we continue in this podcast So, um, some of the other things that the Bible talks about is to not be greedy. Um, you know, I think that, um, it's so easy to have what you need in, you know, you have enough, but yet you want more and more and more. And so that is what greed is. It's like, you're, you're over, uh, over expecting, you're overly wanting more. And sorry, that was kind of a bad sentence structure there, but you're wanting more and more than you need. And so one of the things that I've read in a few books is that, you know, giving is going to combat your greediness when you start to become more of a generous person, you know, you can really combat, you know, the greediness instead of saying, you know, this is all mine and I just need to get more and more. You can say, okay, how can I bless someone else or some other organization or uh, something with my resources? Um, A great example of that is you have these big companies, right? 
But a lot of times, you know, the employees all the way down to the janitor, you know, is not making a living wage. And that's one of the curses of this earth is that, you know, you have the people at the top, you know, hoarding all of the money and then they just give out a little bit to the employees that really do a lot of the grunt work for the company. And so um, that's kind of how it is. That's kind of how it goes. And so I would say um, I, you know, think that if you're looking to increase your wages, you're going to have to get some sort of skill, some sort of training. Um, And it's never too late to go back to school I think that you have to figure out the right school, the right program, you know, um, and figure out, you know, the financial part of it. And there's a lot of education that is free, too. I think, you know, the easiest thing that you can do is buy a book, you know, on some sort of uh, topic that you're interested in. But um, I agree with the statement that you know, minimum training gets you minimum wage. And so you're going to have to uh, get some sort of training. Even if you're starting your own business, you're going to have to learn the skills. You can't just desire something and not work, not put any work in to get it. And so, um, that's what we're all learning, you know. I think this brings me up to the next point, though, is that we have to learn how to be content. And um, I think that that's one of the biggest things that I think the Bible talks about is that, you know, if you are poor and your needs are met, then. You know, I think that, you know, we do have to sometimes learn, you know, how to be okay with what you have for right now, even though more can come in the future. um, We are looking at, okay, how can I be thankful and grateful for the things that you do have now? I think it's a different a little bit of a different message. I wouldn't necessarily say that to someone who is in, you know, poverty or, uh, you know, a deep lack of resources. I think, you know, that's a different type of message. I think for that person, you know, um, they need to come to, uh, address the different problems that they may have. You know, it make, it may be mental health issues, it may be drugs, it may be alcohol, um, you know, it may be, um, some sort of disability. And so some of these things can be fixed, but some also, you know, don't necessarily have a complete, um, clear solution. Um, other than what I've talked about is, You know, I think some people are poor because of the type of way that they live their life. You know, I think that um, God has to do with a lot of different, uh, you know, aspects of life, right? All, All of life comes down to more of a spiritual thing, even though we can kind of look at it like, oh, you know, this person's poor because you know, they drink too much alcohol or, you know, this person's poor for a different reason. I think that, um, you know, sometimes it is a spiritual issue that that person needs to come to faith in Jesus Christ. And, um, what I wanted to talk about is that how, you know, Jesus, he said that, he gave a promise that all of our needs would be met if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
And so um, I think that there are a lot of people who maybe don't know that, but also, I mean, a lot of Christians, you know, people who may not necessarily be uh, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, to me, that doesn't necessarily mean that God's going to give you a million dollars, you know, in one year or something like that. But, you know, to me, that is a promise from God that can apply to any person. And so I think addressing all those things that I've just talked about can be a way to combat lack lack of money but I want to touch on a little bit more about contentment is that you know once you do have you know a decent job once you do have you know uh, your food and your house and your clothing and you have some of your basic needs being met we do need to learn how to be okay with what we have and that you know contentment is the opposite of greediness where you know you're not working extra long hours because you're trying to make an extra buck now yeah you know i don't think the bible is against pulling a 10 hour shift or something like that but you know your motivation behind that i think is important and also you know your uh reason for working you know extra but what the bible says is don't overwork to get rich and jesus he said how hard is it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven so to me that's a big answer right there that you know all of the money issues can kind of be boiled down to You know, if you're not rich already, you know, as you're listening to this or as you come to faith in Christ, then don't seek to get rich. You know, the Bible says that those that desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts that that drown men in destruction and perdition. And then it also goes on to say that some uh, have left the faith seeking after money. And so, you know, for the relatively little amount that what the Bible talks about for the topic of money, I think it makes some very big life changing statements that, you know, if you're not rich already, then you should be learning, you know, how to be content and not be on that rat race road to getting rich. And, you know, you need to make a new American dream and define, you know, your dream, so to speak, according to scripture. But the Bible does have to say something about riches in that for those that are rich, It says for them to lay hold on eternal life by doing good with their resources and not putting their trust in uncertain riches, you know, and basically in their money, you know, and God is saying, you know, don't put your trust in riches. And so if you're already rich, God wants you to do good works, you know, and meet urgent needs and, you know, uh, lay hold on eternal life. And um, I think that's something to think about. So when Jesus said how hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven, I think that shapes a lot of what some of our goals are. You know, when I talked about going back to school or, you know, increasing your wages, you know, 
you have to ask yourself, okay, why do you want to? You know, yeah, I think it's a good idea, you know, if you are not necessarily meeting the needs of your family, you know, if you have mouths to feed and, you know, you're not necessarily pulling in enough money for that, then, you know, to me, yeah, I think that it's a smart thing to do, uh, which is to get some sort of training or some sort of technical skill or, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, way to make yourself more promotable. And, um, we don't all have that, that opportunity though. And so I would say, you know, um, looking to, you know, maybe your spouse can work and take on a a job or, uh, really sitting down with your spouse and asking them, Hey, you know, I think you need to go to work and put the kids in daycare or hire a nanny that you pay. And then you keep the extra that doesn't go to daycare. And so, um, that could be a solution. Of course, if you're a single parent or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have a, a spouse that can go to work uh, for a number of reasons or you really the spouse really wants to be a stay at home mom uh, or I guess in some cases a dad, stay at home dad. Um, you know, I think looking into ways to uh, grow in in the career that you're in, you know, I think sometimes uh, there are promotions when you stay at a company for a long period of time that, um, you know, your wages do increase. And I think looking at how you can manage your resources better, which is like budgeting and saying no to things and, you know, uh, cutting back on certain things that you, uh, may be tempted at getting, you know, getting rid of your credit cards and, you know, paying off debts and looking at strategies of how people have gotten out of debt. But like I said, I think you should look into money management through the lens of, you know, what Jesus said, which was how hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. To me, riches in America is something above 80 or $100,000 a year. You know, I think poverty in America is you're making $20,000 a year or less. Um, And I think if you have a family making $20,000 a year, you know, I don't think you should be bothered by the verse that says to be content with what you have as you try to pursue a better career. You know, um, I think it's okay, you know, because I, I base that on another Bible verse, which says that if anyone does not provide for his uh, family and even his own household, He has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. And so Paul said himself that he worked day and night that he may not be dependent on anyone. And so to me, what that says is that, you know, you should be looking for the best opportunity. And I don't think you should stress about it too much, though, that you know, um, you shouldn't necessarily quit your job and, you know, try to pursue some other career. Because another thing that the Bible says is that, you know, you shouldn't produce, you shouldn't pursue worthless pursuits. So things that you are, that are worthless pursuits, you know, when you're listening to someone that says, you know, oh, you know, buy my class and you can learn how to work three days a week and make, you know, a hundred thousand dollars a month. 
you know, that is something that is just going to waste your time. And that, you know, when I look, when you look at the top richest people in the world, it's really 1% of the world, you know, it's a small percentage of people, you know, I think the percentage, I don't know the number, but it's a big number of people that live on three thousand dollars a year not a month a year or um people who live on you know not that much which tells me that it's not as easy as you would think to get rich you know and that the people who do get rich they sacrifice other things in their life and so i think you have to realize what are you sacrificing? And Jesus' statement says that you could literally be sacrificing your eternal life to try to get a better uh, earthly lifestyle. You know, but like I said, you know, um, I think that Jesus is for, you know, uh providing for us and God is going and can provide for uh, the average person, you know, that comes to Jesus Christ. Yeah, you know, there are a few outliers in scripture and there's really only, I, I think, one person that the Bible describes as a Christian that is very poor, which was Lazarus. Um, You know, Jesus was poor too, but Scripture describes the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was a beggar on the street. And there's not really any other scriptures of, you know, someone really poor other than maybe the widow uh, in uh, uh, the book of Kings, where she poured all this oil in jars and she kept pouring oil in jars and you know uh she is described as poor um and then jesus also talked about another widow who gave all she had to uh the church or really it was the synagogue uh and jesus said that she gave more than a rich person because she gave all she had and so there are a few people who are poor in scripture that the Bible brings out. And so, um, as a summary, you know, I've given you a few scriptures. I think some of the biggest things that I see the Bible saying is that one, we have to work, you know, we have to work. And, um, I think two is that we should try to do our best to learn money management skills you know um i think that getting wisdom is something that the book of Proverbs brings out uh there's a few scriptures that i think you can look up in proverbs about money um but you know working definitely is something important and i think the one other thing that i wanted to bring out before i go on to the other points as the summary is that you know the Bible seems to describe some sort of increase that God will give you as you live biblically in a biblical way in regards to money and then in regards to the rest of your life um, as you live a godly life and a life devoted to Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible seems to describe an increase and I get that from the book of Deuteronomy which says that God is the one that gives you power to make a living or some translations say to get wealth and so um, it was a promise that was given to Israel in a way I I count it as a promise that you know um, you're going to increase and, and Moses was saying that hey as you increase you know don't forget the Lord your God And, you know, in the Proverbs chapter 30, you know, um, Agur, Agor, I think that's how you say his name. But in Proverbs chapter 30, he was saying, 
to God, you know, God, give me neither neither poverty nor riches, you know, because he said that if he's rich, he'll say, who is the Lord? Meaning he he's not going to serve any serve God anymore because he's rich and he doesn't need God. But also he's saying, hey, God, don't give me poverty either, because, you know, then I will be tempted to sin in the way that I try to get money and, you know, I'll steal. And so um, those are some points that I wanted to make is that as you continue with God, I believe that there is some sort of increase that you can expect. But at the same time, I don't think that God is necessarily looking to make someone a millionaire or billionaire because that's kind of counteractive to what Jesus taught and then also to you know um what I think God's heart is saying about riches even though yeah I do think there are some examples of rich people in the Bible but at the same time I don't think every example in the Bible is something for us to follow, you know, especially when it's not given as a command or it's not given as, you know, something that is explicitly, you know, taught on, you know, how we should live our life. I think the Bible just describes Abraham and Job and Solomon and maybe even David, even though David considered himself poor uh you know i think a lot of the times before he actually became king you know he was not necessarily rich um and so to me you know uh that is something i can say along the lines of just um you know i think there are examples of rich people in the bible but I know that there is an example of a rich man from the parable of Jesus who ended up going to hell. And there's actually two parables of a rich man who one said, I'm going to break down my barns and build bigger barns. And, you know, God said to him, hey, this very night, your life will be taken from you. And then who will get all your possessions? And there's actually another story of a rich man where uh, Jesus invited him to become a disciple. And he said, go and sell all that you have and give to the poor. And the rich man went away sad. And so in those examples, you see that riches, uh, you know, three examples of riches uh, deterring some uh, turning someone away from um eternal life which is actually a crazy thing to think about you know to be eternally separated from god and to realize that you know you chose money or you chose your sin instead of following after jesus christ where you can have live for all of eternity and you can see god and live with god but also You know, he's going to take care of you and and it's going to be so fun and so joyful. And, you know, to give that up, I don't know if it's just such a simple answer from people. You know, I think people have some different different reasons why they reject, you know, a life for God. But still, you know, from the inside looking out, you know, you can see that you know, a lot of those choices are not good. And so, you know, I would be very cautious as you pursue whatever you're going to pursue in regards to money. You know, I think that um, it can be hard not having what you want or having a lot of money in your bank account. Um, It can be hard, but at the same time, you know, I think that we have to make sure that our priorities are right as we pursue a better life. And I don't think God is against us, you know, bettering our life and living a life profitable to the Lord. 
but at the same time, you know, we have to put a lot of these pursuits into the right perspective. And, um, you know, I think if you do get rich or you get a higher salary, I think definitely you need to check, you know, how you're living your life, you know, and how you're prioritizing your money. You know, are you just taking on more debt? You know, I saw this as I in this podcast, I saw this uh, budget video of how this guy was making, I think it was $40,000 a month. And this was just a fake, uh, fake scenario. As far as I know, it wasn't real. But one guy was making $40,000 a month, but yet he only had a little bit left over. And another guy was making $4,000 a month, but he was saving his money and he had his bills paid and he wasn't taking on more debt and more and more, uh, you know, uh, bills. And so to me, that was a lesson that, you know, even if you have a lot of more money, you know, you can still be poor in some ways, you know, which may not be the right wording to use. But, um, you know, when you have all your money tied up and maybe you buy a boat or you buy a bigger house and, you know, you buy a nicer car. And if you're not paying cash for those things, you know, you're paying rent on those things. And so, at the end of the day, you know, you have, you know, a hundred dollars in your bank account, but yet you have all these nice toys. And then it comes to the point where you can't even use it because you're working extra in order to pay your bills. You know, you're pulling extra hours because you need to maintain the lifestyle that you have. And so, um, as I end this podcast, I would say, you know, we should look up money management skills. I think, you know, um, not necessarily listening to someone who has or who are at least flaunts that they have, you know, millions of dollars in their bank account, you know, because I don't think those guys are necessarily a godly model for, you know, a Christian, even though, yeah, I think that, you know, we can learn money management skills from them and you know they have you know 400 million dollars in their bank account or something so you know they figured out the money game but at the same time you know i think that getting money management skills from a uh neutral source you know not necessarily someone who is rich but also not someone that you know doesn't know what they're talking about either And so, um, thanks so much for checking out this podcast today. You know, um, hopefully I said something that was useful to someone. So, um, thank you. And I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.